What's cooking, everyone? I'm Cal. And I'm Seth, and this is Nights at the Kitchen Table. Today we're bringing you an episode of our signature series, Seven and a Half Budget Cards for Commander, where we present seven cards that are around a dollar, and then a half card that falls more within the two to five dollar range. Today we're talking about seven and a half budget cards that are really underplayed, but you should throw them in your decks. First up, we're going to be talking about Farsight Mask. This is a 26 cent card, it's in less than 1200 decks, and it's great. It's a five mana artifact. It says whenever a source an opponent controls deals damage to you, if Farsight Mask is untapped, you may draw a card. All right, so an important distinction I wanted to point out is that it's not just combat damage, it's any right, kind it's of any damage. damage. Yeah. So if we have like, even like a heavy combat meta would love this kind of card, or if you're playing against a lot of like aristocrat style decks, like Blood Artist Effect, Zulaport Cutthroat, Sir Conrad, they're all over the place. Or any of these token heavy decks, anything that's dropping like an Impact Tremors or anything mm, like that. Perforos. Yeah. yeah. They're going to be doing small increments of damage, and every time they do one or two damage card to you, advantage. draw on a card. Yep. So the best part is this is colorless. So you can throw it in your mono whites. That's mono the whites, biggest struggle. Yeah. Boros, yeah. or if you want to run a colorless deck as well, it'd be excellent for that. It'd be amazing in your Darien King of Jeldkar. Or Gildekar? Gildor? Gildor. Wow, that was great, huh? <laughs> it's, it's a card. You know what it looks. We'll show it up on the screen. You'll see it. <laughs> should be seeing it like right here. Right there. Or like your Heliod Sun Crown, which is like one of the most popular mono white commanders right now. Yeah. So if you're looking for a way to draw cards in mono colors white. that struggle to draw, this would be an excellent well, mono choice. Mono white has a total of like two. So <laughs> yeah. you, this got to go in there. So that'd be a good one. And that'll bring us to our number two card here. We have Fallen Angel for 11 cents. And it only shows up in 571 decks. And it is a black three and two black, so five mana total. Creature Angel, three, three. It has flying. And sacrifice a creature. Fallen Angel gets plus two, plus one till end of turn. I love this card. I, you know, my favorite meta is Aristocrats. I love it. I love black. I love killing things. Fallen Angel is amazing because you're getting twice as many powers twice as many pluses to your power as the creatures you sacrifice so if you sacrifice three creatures that's six additional power that you get to throw at somebody's face yeah i mean you can get the same effect like a free sack outlet at instant speed for much less mana like a viserys seer for only one mana right. or but, even some of these artifacts you know but yeah you're definitely. not getting Ashnod's altar at somebody's face you're not weaponizing it definitely this fallen angel you sacrifice 10 creatures now you have 20 power with flying that mm. mid to late game that could just end somebody. Oh, absolutely. Like you're not game missing out on any of your triggers. You know, you're still getting the death triggers that you would be running in a deck like this. Yeah, definitely. So if you can afford a five mana free sack outlet, we highly recommend Fallen Angel for you. That's great. You so. can throw it in Tasa Karlov, a Land of the Dusk Rose. Yeah, any kind of aristocrat sacrifice yeah. strategies. Absolutely. Uh, next up is Siren's Call. Now this one's kind of a complex one, so we're going to have to read the oracle text on it. But first, it's a 10 cent card. Super budget, you throw a dime, you got the card. It's in less than 200 decks. So no one's playing this thing. No, no one's ever <laughs> heard of it, but it's amazing. Let's explain why. So it says, and we're just going to read it, and then we'll explain it. It says, cast the spell only during an opponent's turn before attackers are declared. Creatures the active player controls attack this turn if able. At the beginning of the next end step, destroy all non-wall creatures that player controls that didn't attack this turn. Ignore this effect for each creature the player didn't control continuously since the beginning of the turn. That was a lot. Let's break it down. Okay, so first off, it's really restrictive when you can cast it. So it's only doing like their like pre-combat phase. Yeah. No, before that, pre-combat. So, so anytime during that, you can cast a spell. So, and then it kind of like pseudo goads the creatures because mm -hmm. it says the active player controls must attack this turn if able. So they it still can still attack you though. So. Yeah, so it can still get you. So be a little careful with that because that's probably yeah. where they're going. Right, yeah. So they're going for you because they all have to attack. But throw a sleep spell in there. Yeah, they any kind of sleep effect, any kind of effect that will like tap those creatures so they can't attack, Siren's Call will destroy them. Yeah. You throw a sleep, uh, blinding light. If you have a commander that does that for you, that taps your opponent's creatures, they're all going to die this turn. Yeah, commanders like uh, Coma the Cosmo Serpent, he just sacks a serpent, taps down a permanent. So before you cast this, sack a couple serpents, tap down the creatures you really need to kill, and for one mana, cast Siren's Call, and it blows yeah. up a handful of creatures. Or if you're running an OG tide deck like my wife does, then boom, you know, you're attacked with a bunch of dragons, you tap all of their stuff they don't untap during their next step, one mana, you just wipe their entire board. 
Yeah. One that's, mana board wipe is amazing. That's super hard to find that in mono blue. They have a really hard time usually handling creatures on the battlefield. You can bounce them, but they're going to come back. Yeah. This kills them. This gets rid of them. Yeah. So. No, I love yeah, it. We definitely recommend Siren's Call. We're excited for that card. All right, that's going to bring us to our card number four, Bludgeon Brawl. Um, for this, it costs less than a quarter, coming in at 24 cents, and shows up in about 650 decks. Seriously underplayed. Yeah, it, it should show up in way more than that. But what you get here is a it's three mana, so two and a red, for an enchantment. It says each non-creature, non-equipment artifact is an equipment with equip X, and equipped creature gets plus X, plus zero, where X is that artifact's converted mana cost. So essentially, all of your non-creature, non-equipments, so mana rocks, yeah. uh, your token artifact tokens you create, you can now equip to your creatures. I mean, literally all of your mana rocks, any, especially now with like all these token artifacts that we're, people are running in these decks, you got your treasure tokens, mm -hmm. your clue tokens, your food tokens, all of those are now equip zero equipments. Definitely. I mean, they don't, they won't actually like boost your power for like treasures, clues, and right. food, but any kind of like creature or commander that cares about just having equipments on them will love this kind of card. One of those would be Valdic, Keeper of the Flame. If you know that one, it says at the beginning of your combat on your turn for each ore and equipment attached to Valdic, you create a 3 1 red elemental. So you got a bunch of treasures, a bunch of clues, a bunch of token foods. You all quit those for zero, and at combat you get that many get three one so elementals. So many elementals. So many. Yeah. So that's that's an excellent use for that. Um, Call the Forge Master is another great one. It can help you know equip a treasure token for free, and now you ensure that creature when it dies it comes back. Yeah, Bruin so, or Battle Hammer, same concept. You can be pumping all of your creatures as long as they have a, a treasure token attached for free. And they could still tap for mana. Ah, your definitely. Mana rocks, you could, even though they're equipped, you could still tap them. Yep, so you equip your soul ring for one, it gives it plus two, plus zero, and you can still tap your soul ring for two mana. And if so the creature it doesn't dies, get rid of you're it. not risking your soul ring, because if the not creature dies, it's an equipment that still stays there. So, it's yeah. just giving you extra utility for cards that are already on your battlefield, which is what Commander's all about, right? That's just great. finding extra uses for More things. More utility. Definitely. The next one is Orcish Lumberjack. Some of you may know this one, but they don't. you're probably not using it as you should. It's a 24 cent card, just like the last one, and it's in less than 6,000 decks, so, so really underplayed. Definitely still shows up quite often, right? but probably not as often as we think it should. Right. You should be using it, and you're probably not. What it says, it's a one mana creature, and it has tap, sacrifice a forest, add three mana in any combination of red and or green to your mana pool. All right, so this is this can be a great ramp card if you have the means yeah. to use it. So it can act as like a repeatable ritual effect, so you can be you can still like tap your forest. You can tap your forest for a mana, add it to your mana pool, then tap your orcish lumberjack, sacrifice said forest, and you can add three more mana. So you just added you just add four mana from that one land. From one forest. Yeah. It's great. And I love the flavor on there. Wood is wasted in the dirt. <laughs> Use this forest to the maximum capability. Yeah. And in decks, if you can touch your graveyard and bring those back. It's not a downside. Exactly. So You're if getting you... four mana out of every land, or at least one land per turn. Which Definitely. is early game in Commander. That puts you reams ahead of everyone else. For sure. And it can help like enable other strategies. Like if you need different kind of card types in your graveyard for like delirium effects, yep. this can be a great way to get that extra card type that can be kind of tough to get in there unless you're playing fetch lands, which um, for a budget channel, those are a little out of our price range. A little tough, a little <laughs> tough. But I mean, if you're playing cards like Rune Map Excavator, or if you're like running a big commander with huge commander tax. That's where I love it the most. Yeah. So Drop it's like your commander is your would. top end of your curve. You got like a seven or eight commander, like uh, Borba Rigmos, for example, who cost a bajillion mana. Like seven or eight mana. Yeah, yeah, he's super expensive. He's gonna be the top end. You can just set, use Orca's Lumberjack a handful of times and it'll ritual you right up to where you need to be on right. a turn way before you would reasonably be able to play him. I run this in my Nikki of the Old Ways deck because that it's only creatures you can have in the deck, so you're not having a lot of ramp. Mm, your typical like cultivates and Kadama's reaches can't aren't gonna it. do the thing. Aren't can't the have trick. mana rocks, can't have any of that. Oh, mana rocks either, yeah. Yeah, so you run this Orcish or the Orc in there, throw them in there, you sacrifice a forest, that's four mana you just got that you wouldn't have been able to get through a soul ring or your other stuff. Mm, definitely. So it's more of like a, a non-traditional uh, mana dork, Yeah. That, but it can tap for so much more mana. <laughs> <laughs> So, and yeah, um, I don't know if I mentioned this yet, but commanders that'll work really well with it, like I said, Omnath, Locus of Rage, Nikki the Old Ways, and Barbara Rigmos, just to name a few of these uh, really good gruel commanders. And that'll, that's going to bring us to uh, card number six. We have Jar of Eyeballs. So for 16 cents, 
you can get a card that shows up in less than 700 decks and the best part is it goes in any deck you need to as a colorless artifact and it acts as a repeatable tutor. Who doesn't want a jar of eyeballs in their deck? I know. Well, it's guess, just great. It's it gets creepy. even better here. <laughs> it says whenever, a, for three mana, it says whenever a creature you control dies, put two eyeball counters on jar of eyeballs. That's like the coolest counter type I've eyeball ever seen. Eyeball counters. I've never even thought about it. You know, most of these creatures are going to have two eyeballs. So you literally die, you pluck the eyeballs out. <laughs> I, that for an I really want to find a way to put eyeball counters on the Ozolith now. <laughs> Could be fun. That'd be so disgusting to picture an Ozolith with just like dozens of eyes all over just it. all over this oh, monument. Oh, that's so creepy. <laughs> okay, so you get the eyeball counters, but what are you going to do with them? You can pay three mana and tap your jar of eyeballs, and it says remove all eyeball counters from jar of eyeballs. Look at the top X cards of your library, where X is the number of eyeball counters removed this way. Put one of them into your hand, and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. So it's a repeatable tutor, essentially. That's what it says. Yeah, definitely. It's not like quite as effective, I guess, as like your grim or demonic tutors. Or you can't go through your whole deck at instant speed. Well, mm -hmm. actually, it is instant speed. This one is instant speed. Yeah, yeah it so is. it's better than like demonic tutors. Yeah, it comes to sources. Yeah, but you are limited to how many creatures, how many cards you can go down in your deck. But if you're running a token deck, if, you're if only there was a way to make deck, a million tokens in Commander. Oh, that's, you know, I like cards like, you know, Chatterfink Squirrel General. If only that existed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I actually run this particular card in my Coma Cosmo Serpent deck because that deck really struggles to that tutor for anything. Because you're sacrificing all those serpents. Exactly. And like, I'm not running black or anything, like one of the more notorious uh, tutor colors. Yeah. And so I need to find a way to get the cards that I need. Absolutely. Jar of eyeballs. And, and every single one of those serpents that you sacrifice. That gets two not eyeball only counters. Are you doing what Coma does, tapping mm -hmm. stuff down, but you're also adding two to your tutor count, we could call that. Value. <laughs> <laughs> and it's important to remember, we've said it twice, but we didn't notice it at first. We get two eyeball counters for yeah. every one creature you sacrifice. Every one of them. So it doesn't amazing. take very long to be able to dig a significant portion through your deck. I mean, even if you're waiting a few turns between each use of this, because it's repeatable, mm -hmm. if you tutor every four turns, that's still so much better than anybody else at the table is going to have. You can only have one demonic tutor in your deck. Yeah, definitely. But you got this, you can use it every few turns, get whatever card you need for that situation. You're going to be ahead of everyone at the table. I guess it could also technically be card draw in a way, because you are drawing a card. Yeah. So I don't know if you're looking for a way to kind of draw cards and the colors that struggle to do that. It's better than scrying, because you can look down X cards. Right, and you get the card that you need right. from that. You need a removal, get a removal. You need a ramp, get a ramp. You need a land, get a land. It doesn't matter. So. Yeah, we love Jar of Eyeballs. It's done a lot of work for us. Yep. Next up is, it's actually a cycle that we're going through this time. It's the Depletion Lands, which I had actually never heard of before Cal pointed them out to Love me. these things. <laughs> um, at the, it's five lands in each of the five colors. The cheapest is 22 cents. The most expensive is still under three quarters. It's 73 cents. Um, so what they do... I'm going to let you go ahead and explain that because you know them better. Yeah, well, we'll just read them really fast. Um, so they come into play tapped, and they enter with two depletion counters on them. They can tap to remove a depletion counter from them to add a two color of mana to their mana pool. Of the given color, of whatever given color. that is. Yep. Yeah. And if there, well, if there are no depletion counters on the land anymore, then you sacrifice it. I love these. I, love, I mean, because think about it. Early game, you're getting two mana out of one land. That's great. You're ahead of your opponents. It is going to go away eventually, but I feel like that doesn't really matter. Some of the things that we said with Orcish Lumberjack also apply here. Mm -hmm. They are like little ritual effects on the lands, and the downside of sacrificing a land in some strategies may not be an actual downside. Right. It's yeah. adding card types to your graveyard or decks that can pull them back out. It's going to be the same. These. I mean, if you have a high CMC commander, you know, if you have an eight mana commander. Mm -hmm. You drop a couple of these downs, you're going to get it out on turn four or five at the latest, you know. Absolutely, definitely. So, I mean, they have uh, one for every color. So any deck that's looking for something like this can fit it in. Mm -hmm. um, so like you said, high CMC commanders really love it in here. Proliferate decks, you can proliferate those depletion counters. So you may start with only two, but you can get up to three, four, five pretty quickly. So it wouldn't be a problem at all. So anything like um, like Atraxa even would love this because she's going to be re re That's true. proliferating <laughs> every turn. <laughs> 
So I, I like it for like Moldrotha or Moldrotha. I don't know how to say that. Yeah, Moldrotha. Because you, know? yeah. you can drop that land back from your graveyard onto the battlefield. Mm-hmm. You're doubling that up. You're getting basically a soul ring, but in the color mana that you need. Yeah, it, it gets colored mana, which is a big thing. Yeah. So it's like the hardest thing. I personally really despise tap lands. I just hate the tempo loss you get. There's just been so many times where I need a land and I'll top deck one. It enters tap. But it enters tap. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm still a turn behind and I can't do what I needed to. But these lands I'll make an exception for. Right, because they put you ahead in the long run. Yeah, they, yeah. they kind of make up for the turn you had to take off to play them because they give you two extra mana. Some commanders they'd go great in Toxtril the Corrosive. We mentioned Muldrutha. Mm-hmm. It would also go great in Coma. I have them in my Coma yeah. deck. Any so. of those, it's great. I think, if, especially if you're playing on a budget because they're so cheap. Mm-hmm. Honestly, throw them in any deck that they match the colors in. If yeah. you're struggling for ramp, definitely. It's just it's ramp in a land slot. So, um, really fast to read off the names for you in case you're looking for these. But sandstone needle for the red, remote farm is your white, peat bog for the black, hickory woodlot for the green, and sappers and scary for your blue. And then that brings us to our seven and a half card, which is this one's a two dollar and thirteen cent card. So it is a little more pricey, still within a budget, like. Deck. Yep. Falls within that though. two to five dollar range that we're looking yeah. for. So Domineering Will, it is a four mana instant, three and a blue, and it reads target player gains control of up to three target non-attacking creatures until end of turn. Untap those creatures. They block this turn of able. This is I mean, when you think politicking card, this is like that definition. When you look at politicking in an MTG dictionary, it should have a picture of this right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's so many different ways to use this. We had so so think of this play pattern really fast. Okay. So Seth, you're getting attacked with just this disgusting amount of creatures, like a Galta and a couple other creatures, right? Sure, some scary is coming at my life and this, I don't want it. This is gonna take you out of the game, right? Yep. But maybe for me, it benefits me to keep you in the game. That's one more person these nasty things can attack before they get to me. Right. So I can be like, you know what, Seth? I know you'd rather not die. If I do this favor for you, what do I get in return? I can leverage some kind of deal, cast Domineering Will, and give him my creatures. Like if I have like an indestructible creature, something that can stop Galta from killing him, I can give him that creature now. I survive and now I'm in your debt. Yes, now yeah. I have a favor that I can cash in on later. Well, I like it even better. Um, even like, you know, we're playing a four-player game. Mm-hmm. Two of my opponents aren't liking each other. They're fighting each other, whatever. And I don't want to get touched by anything, but you have something scary that I don't want on the board. If this person attacks the person diagonal from me, I could just give them your creature. And then it would die in combat. Yeah. So I not only do I block them, you know, I keep them from getting an advantage, I also destroy your creature in the process. There are so many irritating creatures in Commander that just sit on a battlefield and never enter combat one way or the other that are just really hard to remove. This is a great way to force those creatures to enter combat and they die as a result. And it's great in sacrifice decks too. You know, Marchese oh, yeah. and the Black Rose. She'll take those three creatures and then I'm sure she'll find a way to put a counter on them. Sure, that's what Marchese, she does. you're going to run. Yeah, you're going <laughs> to yeah. have that. And so they'll come back at the end of the turn. If they didn't die in combat, you can sacrifice them. So essentially in Marchese of the Black Rose, this card reads, pay four mana, pick three creatures on the battlefield, they are now yours. Gain control three creatures. Same thing with Kells, Fight Fixer. You take them, sacrifice them, play a Demir, or sorry, pay a Demir, and you draw a card. Yeah, so you draw so. three cards, and you get rid of probably the three worst creatures on the battlefield for you. Yeah, whatever the scariest ones you have, whatever biggest threats is, you know, it's looking at your life, it's making you pay more, mm-hmm. it's taking your life down, whatever. You take that, sacrifice it, you play a blue or a black, and you not only got rid of your threat, you also got card advantage. Yeah, definitely. There's We were just playing a game recently that someone had an Ulamog on the table that I just could not get rid of. This would have been great. I had a sacrifice outlet. You could have taken it, <laughs> I could have just it. taken it, blocked in combat, removed one of their other creatures coming at mm-hmm. me, and then sacrificed and got rid of my problem. It's great. I love it. So, so that's spin our cards. I mean, they're amazing cards. I love them all. Yep, definitely look for these. If you have any kind of deck that will fit the strategy these cards are looking for, we highly recommend putting them in there. And the best part is they will never break the bank. They're cheap. I mean, most of these were less than like 50 cents. Yeah, so... So definitely look for these. And they're doing the same things that some of these $10, $20 cards on EDH Rec are doing. Yeah. They just go to prove that you don't need to be spending the big bucks to be able to make the big plays. Yep. Make a cheap deck. Make a budget deck. Bring it to MTG Night on whatever, wherever you're going, to the store, to your friend's kitchen table, and just wreck their face with a 
deck that's half their price. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank you all for watching. That brings us to the end of the video. Again, if you like our content, please give us a like or subscribe. We really appreciate it. Bon appetit.